I think every wargamer dreams of a beautiful table with bespoke terrain, wonderfully painted, designed to fit the themes of their armies and the games they want to play. But sadly, that's not the reality for most gamers out there. Whether that's because we don't have the space, the time, or we play at war games clubs that don't have terrain that matches our armies and things, there are many reasons for that. For me, one of the biggest things is time. I've got lots of games that I enjoy playing, lots of armies and miniatures to paint. To add terrain to that as well, especially when it's complicated, it can be a bit of a pain sometimes, as much as I want my games to look fantastic. So with the Legions Imperialis hopefully not too far away in the future, I started to think about the terrain that I might need for the game. I used to have Adeptus Titanicus and all the wonderful terrain that came with that. Now I sold it on because I wasn't playing the game and I, I regret getting rid of the terrain now. It was uh, lovingly built and painted and it would have given me what I needed for a good start. Now I do intend on getting some new terrain when it comes out. Games Workshop are going to make some fantastic kits. But they're often very, very detailed and I wanted a bit of a head start. And I think I've got that with the game being delayed slightly. But I wanted something simple to build and paint to start with. And I didn't want to go down the MDF route. Welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart. In this video, I'm going to find some cheap and simple 3D printed STL files designed for Horus Heresy or 40k for Epic. I'm going to print them and paint them in the most simple way as I can, but still making them look cool for the battlefield. So I headed straight over to my mini factory. That's usually where I start when I get most of my 3D prints from. I still haven't printed an awful lot of different things. And it wasn't long though before I found some epic heresy stuff, some epic 40k, epic 30k, loads of terrain that's easily themed at that, and loads of other things as well. You can see I'm scrolling past tanks and all other bits and bobs. Now these were quite detailed kits. They look fantastic and I've definitely bookmarked them to go back, but I wanted something a bit cheaper and a bit basic to match the needs and the theme of this video really, which is simplicity. And I started to come across all these files from All Game Forge. They look pretty cool, look like they fit the aesthetic well, but there wasn't loads and loads and loads of detail to pick out. And as you can see here, they're only $3 for a set of Gothic ruins. A slightly larger set of Gothic Ruins is only $3 as well. And this chunky Gothic Ruin building is only $4. I've only got an Anycubic Photo Mono 4K with a fairly small print plate, so I was having to avoid some of them when I looked at the dimensions, but I added the Ruin Mechanic Shop you can see on the screen here for $4. Dodged a couple more that look fantastic, but just a little bit too big right now but opted to add a ruined desert building for a slightly different design. Now, there will be loads and loads of other stuff on the internet out there. You'll be watching this and think, I barely looked. And, and that is totally right. And if you have any tips and things, if you've got anything you recommend, please do pop them in the comments. Don't pop any links because YouTube will just delete them and the comment and I won't get to see them. But the point of this video was to find these pretty simple STLs. And I don't mind paying a few pounds i know there are probably free ones out there as well quite often they don't always print as well i tend to find that when they're on my mini factory i don't have issues with printing and things like that and these just hopefully would fit the bill so i set about loading the first ones in my slicer i went for the smallest option which was the, the small gothic ruin walls the whole set nicely fitted on the print plate and you can see from the estimate there, it's going to cost me about 59 pence to print them. I fired up the printer and the first lot came out, no issues at all. And yes, they are basic, but once they're painted up, I'm sure these are going to look fantastic. So with the easy stuff out of the way, I decided to add on the next bits and I went for these um, mechanics buildings, these ruined mechanics buildings. Two of them fitted on the plate, so I thought, well, I'll print two then. And then luckily for me, the big Gothic building also just squeezed on the plate. I could always reduce it in size if it didn't. Now, initially that looked a rather scary £7.27. It's obviously a solid thing. So I hollowed it out and managed to reduce the price a little bit. And at £5.26, once you see the print, hopefully you all agree that that's not too bad. 
loaded up the ruined desert building and it was definitely too big for my print plate. It's not an issue, I can reduce it down in size and still print it, but I decided I was going to try printing the, the larger walls and the ruined tower first and I'll add that to the collection later on. And there we are, and that is everything printed. Absolutely no issues at all. The ones in a slightly different tough resin than I had, um, but for the rest of them I used up some Elegoo water washable resin, which is great, but I haven't been using it with my Wargaming miniatures because I want them to be a little bit tougher and, and not break. But that is absolutely fine for terrain. So the slightly larger Gothic Ruin sets, they need gluing together, or at least if you want to, you can glue them into sort of corners like that. You can, you can even do all four sides. They're completely mix and match. I've printed two sets of everything here. I will go back now and add even more to it in all different configurations. And in no time at all, everything was built and ready for priming. So after a black prime with a rattle can, I set about doing a limited Zenithal pre-highlight with my airbrush, so it's just white in there. And I decided to highlight the front panels of the buildings, but leaving the kind of support pillars that are at the edges. I made sure I caught the ruined areas at the tops as well, and then also round the edge of the base, which is also sort of ruined blocks and tiles and bricks and things. For the small and medium Gothic walls, I did exactly the same method, using the white in the sort of center panel areas, but leaving the pillars as black as I could. have to remember the point of this exercise is speed and simplicity. So I grabbed some Agaras Dunes Contrast, I did a 50-50 mix with water and whacked it in my airbrush and then concentrated on those areas that I had just highlighted with the white. Not going in too hard or heavy, I want to leave the natural shadow that's been created by the zenithal in there. Again, a speed thing here, and I'm not too worried if there's a little bit of overspray onto the, the other pillars at the sides either. For ease, I use the same colours at the tops and around the edges of the base. We're going to weather those later and add other colours in so it won't matter. And then just like I did before, I repeated the method on the Gothic walls. And the same for the Ruin Mechanics building. I grabbed some Mantis Warriors green, thinned it slightly, and just to add a little bit of different colour, I used it for this more intact outbuilding here. Then I grabbed some Garak Sewer contrast paint again, thinned slightly just to keep the flow well and started working it into the shadows. So all the edges, all the crevices and then up and down the fronts of all of the main pillars. Again, I'm not super worried here if there's a little bit of overspray, it looks like shadow. I'm gonna be dry brushing these with metallics afterwards. And just like with the previous stages, I copied the method over onto the lower Gothic walls. And once that was all fully dry, I reached for black metal from the Metal and Alchemy range from Scale 75 and dry brushed it all over the miniature, trying not to get it on the yellow too much, only the raised areas, but I was picking out all of the main sort of bits that jutted out, all of the detail there, and it just really starts to, to bring the miniature together. It works exactly the same on all the smaller parts. And then to really make it pop, I grabbed the Game Air Silver and repeated the process again. Now you obviously don't have to paint these miniatures as if they're all metallic. You can paint them all as, as concrete or rockcrete. Um, but I wanted to keep this simple and I quite like the idea of there being a mix of rockcrete with big iron support pillars and this seemed to be a suitable way of doing it. 
Again, once that was dry, I decided to work in some pigments. So this is a, a, a dark sienna color. It's a brown really to brush into all of the detail around the edges of the building. You see I used this tray that's got an overspill on there for some of the other colors. And I started picking that up with the brush as well, just to give some variation to the area. If you're gonna be using these a lot, you can seal them in using a varnish or something, but I brush them into all the detail and then I blow the excess off and you'd be surprised how well it stays. And I'll probably leave these as they are for now. I quite like the dry looking effect. And then for all the smaller walls and ruins, I just went around the edges. So as if the dust had blown up around the edges of the buildings, just at the bottoms. And there you have it. The set is all complete, super simple. This may be one of the simplest paint jobs I've completed on the channel, but that really was the goal of this video was to bulk out some terrain and see how quickly I could do it. Now taking out the printing side of things and the time it takes to do that, it's probably only taken me um, a couple of hours to sort of prep and, and, and paint this amount of terrain. And when it's all squished together, yeah, it's only taking up about a square foot worth of space. Um, but this is probably enough terrain to cover a two by two part of the board. And it was very, very cheap as well. So the total cost here is only about 14 pounds worth of SDLs. And obviously I own those now, so I can print them as, as many times as I want to. And in terms of resin, um, we're probably looking about the same amount again. So if that's around 30 pounds to do a um, maybe a two by two square foot on a games table, that, that's pretty good. Obviously that total cost only goes up by another 15 pounds, just the cost of the resin each time I do it. So it's definitely cheaper than than buying Games Workshop style scenery. And no surprise there, no one expected it to be more expensive. Um, maybe cheaper than a lot of MDF kits and things that are out there. There may be some cheaper ones, but I think getting that amount of terrain for 15 pounds moving forward, we, we, you know, is, is 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 a bargain. So I'm happy with what I what I've spent. Um, and then the other part of the goal really was how quickly could I do it, and that was almost more important and it was super quick. They feel like they've got enough detail when you paint them like that. They look good on the table. And you know, I will add some nicer, more detailed plastic terrain from Games Workshop to it as well. But a way of bulking out a table, getting a core down, I haven't had to sit and spend ages building. I literally glued a few walls together at the edges and it's just been a really nice, simple process. Now I'm gonna go back and, and repeat that now, at least double it up, look for a couple of different STLs, maybe look to print those different shaped ones for a little bit more variety. And then I'll leave it at that and look for some extra things, but at least I'll have some terrain from launch ready to go. Um, so when my armies are painted and hit the table, they'll be ready as well. So let me know what you think. Do you think it looks okay for uh, for such a simple STL? I'm you know relatively impressed with how well they they painted. They do have enough detail. There's just no fine detail on there. No little touches. No aquilas and things. That kind of stuff. But in terms of of terrain, I'm, I was pretty impressed with them. I've got an okay printer. I'm sure if you had an even better printer, you'd be able to get a, a cleaner job without any of the the print lines showing through. But again, for this scale and from what I'm looking for, I'm I'm very happy with this level of detail on a building if it was for 28 mil i would I'd be looking for something else like i mentioned earlier if you've got any tips any recommendations for terrain for epic style stuff let me know because i am interested and i'm look i'm interested in some more detailed stuff as well i do want to add some more detailed stuff but this was just perfect and, and fitted the bill for this video and what i was trying to achieve at the time if you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. And if you haven't already checked out the other videos on the channel, please do. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.